The activity series is something that's going to allow us to establish if a metal is going to be oxidized by the substances that it's being exposed to. Um, specifically, we're going to be focusing on if the metal can be oxidized by acid or particular metal salts. Um, and as you can see in this table right here, uh, we have a list of metals, okay, as well as hydrogen here. Um, and basically what this table tells us is how readily or how easily um, that specific metal is oxidized. So the metals that are at the top of the list are the most easily oxidized, and the metals at the bottom of the list are the least easily oxidized. And what's neat about the activity series here is that a metal that's higher on the chart is going to be readily oxidized by a metal ion that is below it in the chart. So what does that mean? That means that, for instance, lithium can be oxidized by uh, potassium ion, barium ion, calcium ion, and so forth. Um, and basically with that, that allows you to establish um, if a specific reaction or specific redox reaction will occur um, based on having two substances present. And we'll look at how to apply that in a second. Now, um, Something else that needs to be understood is that when we're referring to the hydrogen here, as I pointed out early, earlier, um, that's actually going to be referring to the way in which a metal is going to react with an acid. Um, so uh, if we look at um, the specific example here, um, any of the metals above the hydrogen um, space that we see here are going to be able to react or going to be oxidized in the presence of acid. So if you put barium, calcium, uh, sodium metal, iron, cobalt, nickel, etc., if you put them in the presence of an acid, they will be oxidized and subsequently um, break down into their ion form. So these are the basics of how to utilize the activity series chart. Um, so let's go ahead and let's apply that. So let's go ahead and look at a couple of practice problems here. Um, so if we look at uh, number one here, uh, it asks us, will an aqueous solution of FeCl2 oxidize magnesium metal? So in this case, they've told us that we have um, <clears throat> magnesium metal and iron plus two. Um, together in some sort of container, right? So we need to figure out if iron plus two will subsequently oxidize magnesium. So what do we do? We go to our activity series chart, as you see here, and we first find our metal. Our metal. So magnesium's our metal, okay? And then what we do is we find the substance that's in its ionic form. So iron is the ion. If the metal is above the ion, then that reaction will occur. And in this case, magnesium is above iron, so we can subsequently go ahead and write out our um, balanced molecular equation and then use that to subsequently write our net ionic equation. So what are we going to do? Well, very simply, uh, we write out our ma magnesium solid plus FeCl2, that's aqueous. Okay, and that's going to give us MgCl2 aqueous um, plus Fe. Okay, and if we look at the number of atoms, it looks like this is balanced. Okay, so this is our balanced molecular equation. Um, we also need to write a net ionic equation, and the way we approach that problem is, remember, we break up all the items that are in their aqueous form into their ions, so Fe plus 2 plus 2Cl minuses. Okay, remember these are all aqueous when they're in their ion form. Mg plus 2 aqueous um, plus 2Cl minus aqueous plus Fe solid. Okay, and then we cross out anything that shows up on both sides of the arrows. Okay, so the chlorides are going to cancel out. So our net ionic equation is going to look like the following. Okay. So um, we can go ahead and make sure that we um, write out if we're in our aqueous format or our solid format, make sure we do that. But uh, we have our 
molecular equation and our net ionic equation for a reaction that actually does occur. So once again, um, we're being asked if uh, aqueous solution of a metal ion containing a metal ion, so lead nitrate, um, will oxidize another metal. So in this case, um, copper is our metal and Pb plus 2 is our ion. So we want to once again find that on the chart. Okay, so copper, um, go down here. This is our metal. Uh, the lead uh, is actually right here. So this is the ion. It's above it. So notice, your metal in this case is below the ion. So in this case, because the metal is below the ion, the lead ion is not able to oxidize the copper. Okay, there's the, the oxidation capability is not there. So in this situation, you would get no, excuse me, no reaction. NR. Okay, so you can't write a balanced molecular equation and you can't write a net ionic equation because uh, neither of them are going to um, be able to react with one another. The electron transfer and accepting is not going to occur in this situation. So once again, remember guys that the metal must be above the ion on this activity series in order to determine um, or in order to get a um, oxidation reduction reaction. Okay, we have one more example here. Um, so we're being asked about zinc metal, um, but we're using the same ion as uh, question number two, so that uh, lead to ion right here. Okay, so once again, we're going to go over to the activity series, and we're going to find zinc, um, and then we're going to look at lead. Notice that zinc is the metal, the lead ion um, is the ion in this situation. So once again, the metal is above the ion, so a reaction uh, will occur in this situation. So we know that we can write a uh, balanced molecular equation and a net ionic equation. So let's go ahead and let's work on that. So zinc solid plus lead nitrate is going to give you zinc nitrate plus lead. Okay, um, everything looks to be balanced. You know, the right number of nitrates, right number of lead and zinc um, atoms. Uh, so this is your molecular equation. Um, so in order to get our net ionic, once again, you're going to break apart all the ions that are present. Okay, um, and then you cancel out anything that shows up on both sides. So in this case, um, the nitrates are what show up on both sides. So the net ionic equation is going to look like the following. So now you have your net ionic equation. Okay, so um, basically just remember that your metal that's being oxidized needs to be above the ion that's doing the oxidation, um, and you'll be able to use this activity series to establish if um, your reaction, your oxidation reduction reaction will occur.